Hi, um, this is a continuation of the project I've been doing is reading from the book that I wrote and it's available on Amazon.com and it's called Maze. It's book two of a serial fiction called Daughter of Darkness and this is chapter 11, part one. L.A. was a long way from Oakland, but his mom was a short distance to Maze's heart. He had a fine memory of their necessary flight from danger and the hundreds of half-baked efforts which preceded the determination she ultimately summoned to leave his brothers and sisters in the hands of God and the devil to look after. The kisses on their little heads, telling them it was going to be okay when she herself was not convinced. The every little setback they encountered traveling up and across the border and into the suck of American culture. He had not forgotten the one who was to blame, his father. He remembered the nights and the fights, and though he was small and very young, the nervous anticipation of his mother before his father came home, cleaning and straightening the house, and the long stretches of vacant silences when she dissociated, and he found her and crawled into her arms with a blanket he clutched all the time, the old man snoring vociferously wherever in the house he had passed himself out. The ugliness of life, the violence of love, was not lost on Mays. He had been marked indelibly and could see through the bullshit of romance to the underlying neediness of human coupling. Awareness of the other half of his inheritance was only a matter of self-discovery in L.A. by going out at night and exploring. His mother suspected he had found his darker calling when he began coming home all fresh energy and light in the head. She was too busy working to police him and tired most of the time. It was hard being immigrants. America wasn't half the dream the coyote she paid to get them across the border had led her to believe. It was work, work, and more work. It didn't help that her son had started talking to himself and acting odd like he was high on drugs, which is what she initially hoped was the case. But after numerous confrontations and denials, searching through his belongings for any sign of paraphernalia and coming up empty, she realized he really wasn't high like everyone else his age and broke down, vehemently praying to God. She got to thinking about Mexico and remembering the strange phenomenon of her own family getting together, all of them, in the middle of the nights, particularly four or five days preceding and after any full moon, and the bizarre happenstances for the imprint they made. The memories were far from compelling, but she forced herself every night to go there in hopes of finding a way to reach Maze. But it was no use. Only prayers and TV could comfort her any more. She listlessly endured repeats of serials like Highway to Heaven and The Honeymooners after picking up the house with special attention to his room, folding and placing all his clothes on the bed, using the palms of her hands to smooth out any creases in the blankets and sheets, shaking the bedspread outside before replacing it otherwise leaving the chaotic disorganization he preferred undisturbed, sighing with the guilt of having gone into every drawer and through and behind all the furniture compulsively to find any kind of mischief common to high schoolers, a joint or even some rolling papers or someone else's prescription with the label half torn off and a few pills left inside. Even some empty cans of whipped cream or bottles of cough syrup would not have displeased her. Or a matchbox full of nutmeg. Or a copy of the anarchist cookbook. A tragic teenage whirlwind romance. Anything, please. The lack of explanation for his behavior, behavior forced her to go there, back to the old life, for the memories with which to compare and determine the obvious. Indeed, there was no other possibility than his having inherited the same dark and violent ways which could not be discussed at any family table.